we have a giant brand GX series pump. I'll show you how to go through it, rebuild it. I just unbolted it. It's just these four, just these four um, Allen screws, Allen bolts. Um, and then it just comes right off, slides off the shaft. There's a, there's a built-in keyway into the pump, so. This one was actually, it was still running, but um, it was starting to bog down and it was getting water into the oil. I've rebuilt this pump one other time. When I first got it, it was kaput. Didn't put out any pressure at all. So I got it for cheap from the get-go. I rebuilt it probably uh, five years ago. Six years ago, I think then it cost me 20 bucks to rebuild it, the part that was broken. We can go. There's um, five or six um, Allen screws around the perimeter, and it'll be spring-loaded. As soon as you start getting the last one out, you'll notice it just wants to come up. Not a big deal. It's not going to go far. Um, I've already drained the oil, everything. I've actually already taken this apart to order my parts that I need. I just loosely reassembled it. Um, you can take that off. It'll just pull right out. It'll be all oily. These might fall fall out as well. They're just loose in there. But this is your your main bearings. And what happens is the engine spins this, and it rotates one end up higher than the other as the engine spins. And so then there's three pistons in here. And as it goes, it pushes, you know, push one in, push the next, push the next, and just cycle around, pushing each one as this, as the engine's spinning around at 3,600 RPM. And this just consists of a couple bearings. This, this bearing, this unit actually had, first time I rebuilt it, the bearing case, this plastic bearing case was actually shattered on one of them. It was actually shattered on this one. But I've just ran it without. It's ran just fine. There's no no trouble. I just removed all the little plastic pieces. And those bearings, they, you know, they're held in there good. They're not going anywhere under pressure. They're going to stay in there just fine. I I have close to 100 hours on it just like that. It's not worth it to spend the money a new bearing case is they want 60 bucks or so for it and this pump itself is only I mean it's a cheap pump it's only probably get it for about 200 bucks brand new so it's not worth putting 60 bucks plus the other parts the parts I just barely bought for it were about 35 but anyway just clean it all up degrease it the the best one of the best things to use is either brake cleaner or Carburetor cleaner this is an excellent degreaser. All my bearings, ball bearings are all clean, nice. Be careful not to use too much um, carburetor cleaner or brake cleaner on your actual seals if you're reusing them or your O-rings, because it has acetone in it, which is a plasticizer, which expands seals and it can actually ruin seals if you're not careful. But we'll move on. Set that stuff aside. Let's get into the body of it. From the back side, you should be able to pull out these um, three, three pistons. The first time I repaired this, it was due to just one of these spring keepers at the top. Just this little, this little piece had actually fractured. And so the return spring actually wouldn't return, the, return it. So... I replaced that the very first time I ever repaired this 100 hours ago or better. These pumps only have about 100, 200 hour life max. And then there's um, there's three other. These would be your, not your pistons, but your, they're kind of like your valves. And they just slide inside each one. There's one for each one just to spring. And one of these. Come <laughs>
and that's everything you can access through there. And then there's just four Allen's screws on the front again. This piece is nothing but your your filter screen. This is a thermo thermo switch. So if the water gets too hot inside there, say you're not running it, you're leaving the wand, you're just leaving the wand shut with the engine running, but not spraying any water. The water actually heats up rather fat, rather quickly, and it'll actually vent out here if the water gets over. Um, 90 degrees or something like that probably says on it um, but that there's a little o-ring in there as long as it's not damaged you're okay and then we have our our valve body I guess it would be called this is our we got three more valves in here we have an unloader which allows the water when you're not push, pulling the trigger and the gun actually hooks down here when you're not pulling the trigger, it allows the water to circle, cir circulate back through and just circulate through. Um, the back side of that. Let's flip that over. You have some a couple seals. You should have a flat o-ring type seal. And then another seal inside that. And you can see that has a nice crack to it. So that what that was doing is no water is supposed to, these are supposed to hold the water out. So water was actually passing past these seals, past other seals into the main housing. But those are the seals, set of three. And then on this side, there's actually more seals. There's a little bronze bushing. Then a little plastic piece. I think it's called the um, seal holder. And then the seal, I actually have the seal out right here. And then the, then the seal. And pull out another one. Little bronze plastic piece. And my seal. I'll have to pry that one out. But, so what I did is I ordered these seals. Three seals there, three seals there. And then I ordered more little valves. They were cheap, seven bucks for all of them but anyway this this sits in there pops up from behind it moves in and out by pushing on it and there's three of these and then what happens I don't know if I, you can see all this, but water comes in here, straight through the front, and is on these three ports. Water is filling up in there, and then it comes out those, those each one of those individual holes, which spray right down on the top of here. So there's a little bit of pressure spraying down on this. Okay, and then there's actually a hole in the top of each one of these passages that run up to here, run up here, run up to here. But, um, so water sprays in just with n no pressure and this piston is depressed. This piston, this, this little piston is relaxed, I guess. So water sprays in and actually fills up, there's a little hole, actually fills up the inside of there and the inside of that entire little piston cup with water. And then as it comes, as this goes around, it pushes this up and the pressure pushes the tip of this plastic piece against the inlet hole. So now it no longer can let any more water in and it doesn't push the pressure out. And then it actually forces the water up, up through here working as a one-way valve and it just keeps doing that. So relax, you know, sucks water in, it presses, compresses, sprays water out that little side hole and up. Um, and from there it actually 